Hello, good morning, everybody. I see that the, the room is full. That's, uh, that's very good. Thank you very much for, for coming to Cologne for this uh, 12th Rotorcraft Symposium. I hope you all have a nice journey and that we will have a, a very good two days of, of uh, discussions, open pr presentations, and, and interactions between each other. So uh, thank you for coming. Uh, we'd like to introduce the first presenter, Trevor Woods, our certification director uh, from IASA. Uh, Trevor, the floor is yours. Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to Cologne. And those watching on our YouTube channel, welcome to join us again. Uh, it's a pleasure for me to open this uh, symposium, the 12th Rosecraft Symposium. And year on year, it just uh, seems to grow. I think we have about 350 people in the room and uh, covering all areas, operators, OEMs, research, national authorities, equipment manufacturers, pilots, and I'm, I'm sure a lot more. So, very warm welcome. Goal of this uh, symposium, as usual, is to exchange uh, information and keep track of progress on safety initiatives with EASA and also to hear from you what your priorities are on where, where we need to move forwards. We come at a time this year where things are changing. A lot of things are changing uh, at the same time. Uh, to mention one, uh, we had the new basic regulation came into effect this year, uh, 4th of July, uh, regulation 2018-1139, so uh, give you lots of bedtime reading. But it's really relevant for you, and for certainly relevant for us, but for you it will uh, give you opportunities and change over the next few years the way we do things. Uh, for a start, it introduces uh, drones into EASA's competence, and you may see drones as an opportunity or a threat a challenge, something else, I don't know, but uh, I think it will be relevant to your industry, so you need to work with us to uh, make sure that we put in place the right framework for drones, and uh, we've already done a lot of work on that, and soon we'll be ready to implement those regulations. There are provisions in there for opt-in, for opt-out, for... Um, opting into the EASA system. Um, national authorities can ask to do that. Uh, there are provisions for the industry to ask to do that. So um, we can directly oversee European um, organizations, especially pan-European organizations. It gives us more responsibility for the environment, research, and cybersecurity. And I think that these are all very relevant to the Rosecraft industry. Just recently, we heard uh, some very important news, the election of Peter Muller as the new chair of EHA. And so um, I think we'll give him a round of applause straight away for that. And also, Rachel Deschler is going to replace me on the 16th of January next year. So, <laughs> so as from now, uh, all your criticisms of VR, so you can give to Rachel. <laughs> all your congratulations, you can still give me until uh, mid-January. But please take the opportunity to meet her over the next couple of days. And. Of course, we see technology come in thick and fast, um, plenty of it. Uh, we need to decide what to do with it. Some of you already decided what to do with it, and others are looking at it, decide, you know, figuring out what's going to happen. But uh, it will introduce new opportunities for business and new opportunities to improve safety. So we'll come back to that later. At the end of last year, I gave you a challenge. Does anyone remember what it is? Did anyone pick up the challenge? No. I set you a challenge to 
create a step change in rotorcraft safety. And we have done some work looking at the statistics, the uh, numbers, and really, uh, over the years, rotorcraft safety has more or less remained unchanged. Maybe it's improved a bit. Maybe there are the odd year when it uh, gets worse. But I said we really need to see a step change in the graph. So some of you, I'm, I know that uh, you're very quiet, but you're all working on safety. It's your primary objective anyway, um, apart from business. And we also took it, took it on board, and we launched a project um, to create a Rosecraft safety map. And we formed a small team uh, involving industry and IASA. And uh, Danielle Ramiti was uh, chairing that group, and it's been very productive. And so through that, we have created a Rosecraft safety roadmap. And exhibit A, there we are. It's a, this one is a draft, so it's being finalized now. And uh, we'll be sharing that with you soon. And David will be uh, talking about that very shortly. It aims to improve safety by 50% over 10 years, which is quite a challenge. But I know that everyone will buy into that and work on it. We need to work together to find the areas we need to have interventions to improve safety. And not only 50% over 10 years, but to have some very positive uh, Im impact within five years. So within five years, we want to see the graph, the kink in the graph take place. So, so I thank the um, group for their hard work over the last few months and coming up with the very good uh, recommendations in there. It does focus uh, quite a lot on lights and small lights aircraft and small operators because that's where the numbers show the greatest risks are. Uh, some of the gains we expect from training um, and we see the uh, simulator outside. I hope that you've all had a go on, on that. I haven't yet, but I hope that I get the chance. Uh, who's running the simulator outside? Anyway. Make sure that I see you <laughs> later. Um, and there are lots of, as I say, lots of opportunities with uh, technology uh, in many ways to understand what the risks are uh, through research, but also to remove risks by using technology. So it was, uh, road, the uh, roadmap is being finalized very soon now. And just before I hand over, I'd like to thank you all for coming here, taking your time. I know it's a big commitment, and also, if you're taking part, you're making presentations, that takes a lot of time uh, apart from just coming here. I know that. And thanks to the FAA and Transport Canada for coming across the Atlantic. Uh, I know a lot of you have come across the Atlantic as well, so thank you all for that. Uh, we, we need to join up globally because um, if we have different standards, it doesn't help us with safety and it doesn't help your business as well. So next year um, will be even bigger and we'll say a bit more about that at the end. My first item on the agenda is for uh, Peter. So... Peter, are you ready? Okay, so I'm going to hand over to Peter. Thank you very much.